Welcome back to our Real Love Scenario. Real Love Scenario. Welcome, welcome back to another week. How are you? Good. Rhonda had a birthday <laughs> weekend. How was that? It was amazing. It was so good. Um, so good. I felt the love. I really did. I did not plan anything technically for my birthday this year, which was nice. It's always good. Yes. And it worked out perfectly. That's awesome. Yes. Yeah, so I'm thankful. Do you have, when you do that, do you have friends that be trying to like force you to do something? Yes. Absolutely. Like, so you really just not going to do anything for your birthday. I'm like, it's, it's my, my birthday, birthday, right? I get to do what I want. That's what, that's what I heard. It's my party. I can cry if I want to. I can do what I want. It's my day. Um, but no, it was good. I spent some time with my mom. Um, my friend LaRonda took me to dinner. It was just a good day. I went to the spa, got my nails done. I felt like it was about me. So yes. I love that. I'm happy yeah. for Thank you. Thank you very much. That. I want to shout out Caleb McKenzie. Hey, Caleb McKenzie. Caleb McKenzie said, favorite podcast. I'm a religious watcher and I and listener. And Rhonda said to get y'all to 100 reviews for her B-Day. And I said, yes, ma'am. So I'm here. Boom. Thanks, boo. Shout out to you. <laughs> so we we got some people listening to your birthday request. So Thank shout out to you. Thank you, Caleb McKenzie. Yes. Thank um, you so much. And, and if you watched last week or whatever week that was, you know that it's Dre's birthday month. It is my birthday. And it's month. on his list. It is Scorpio season. Yeah. And let's see if we can get a 200. We're at 108 right now on Apple. Easy. Five star. I believe in you all. I believe in them. I believe in them too. They love us. Our listeners are great. We still need to come up with a name. Yeah. Shout out. Like, yeah, hit us up with some names. Like, what do you think is. Because mm-hmm. we don't got like a thing to where we can be like the scenarios. What if That's we not call like a them music group. The real lovers. Bars. <laughs> Shout out to all the real lovers out there. Shout out to our real lovers out there. I love that. Boom. We'll still take your suggestions. We'll, we'll throw that one in the. No. No, no, that's it. Dre said that's it. Never mind. Real lovers. I like Done. that. Shout out to all the real lovers here listening on Real Love Scenario. Hey, y'all. Shout out to all my real lovers. Yes, you got to put, on, you gotta put on your late night radio real show lovers. voice. Welcome back to the Real Love Scenario. Real lovers. <laughs> yes i love it i love, I love it. that all right cool <laughs> i love that that's not even fake like real lovers that's we mm. in there well, our theme song should be like lovers and friends yeah sometimes it be clicking up here i see it sometimes the pieces hit right? <laughs> <laughs> sometimes they don't like when i don't realize that you all want to be anonymous <laughs> yes but you know it's all right yes well Players speaking of anonymous yes we do have another anonymous write in this week See how I remembered that? <laughs> Boom. Shall we? Yes. Let's get into it. So um, our anonymous real lover wrote in and said, hi, I'm in a committed two and a half year relationship. We live together and have blended our families. He is considerate, kind, honest, genuine, and my best friend. Oh. Where we have the largest problem is upbringing. I grew up in a traditional household. The man was the head and the woman was the neck. He grew up with matriarchs. He is the youngest of four and the only boy. In his family, women run things. On a daily basis, he looks to me to make decisions. We have had discussions where I express that I don't feel comfortable taking the lead. He has expressed that he understands, but changing 40 years of upbringing is a challenge to change. And that is all he knows. I'm beginning to get frustrated whenever he looks to me to take the lead. How can I get him to take the lead in decision making? For context, I do consider myself an alpha female, but only at work. When I'm at home, I want him to take the lead. It is extremely attractive to me when he takes charge. I just don't want to have to force him to do it. Signed, not the head of the household. I love that. I do love that. <laughs> and I'm looking at the name. People, even if we said it, nobody would even know. I no. feel like no. but anyways, um, this is a good a good scenario to go through. I don't think we had one really like this. No, I don't think so either. I love this. Um, and I think it's kind of perfect for you and I to talk about because mm-hmm. You are a married man who is very much a leader in your relationship. Yes. And I am a single woman, but I re- I um I re- connect to her on being an alpha female. Yes. And an alpha female who would only like to be that mm-hmm. at work. Yes. <laughs> and not outside <laughs> of that. So you you wrote into the right place to get advice on this. So where shall we begin? Where do you want to start? You know, I want to. I want to talk about where she she goes into um, kind of what she considers it's the upbringing. Okay. Like and and I 
I want to pose a question to you around like, do you think that that is something that is taught that like, even with your own experiences, did you become or want to become kind of a lead in your relationships because uh, you learn to be that way? Or do you feel like you just naturally have that? Uh, I don't think either to a certain extent. So I don't think you're necessarily. So, no, let me say that. So you, there are some households to where a father may be like, yo, as a man, you need to do this. Or other men around you may mm -hmm. say like, as a man, you need to do that. As a man, you need to yeah. do that. Um, sometimes what they're saying you need to do to be a man is not at all what being a man is. Right. Um, but I think from my experience, it's more observations than it is somebody actually telling you to do something mm -hmm. um, or you learning or, you know, or anything like that. It's yeah. just watching mm -hmm. and just seeing how things operate. I remember my shift from kind of that thought of like a woman doing everything to like a man then leading, mm -hmm. like living and being with my mom as a single mom. I remember my mom, especially my dad, my real dad was always in my life, but yeah. I just didn't live with my dad. I lived right. with my mom. Yeah. So living with a single mom and a mother, things are different. Like mm -hmm. when it comes to mowing the lawn, I wasn't big enough at that time to mow the lawn. Yeah. We didn't have money to hire a groundskeeper or anybody to do yeah. landscaping. So my mom mowed the lawn. Mm -hmm. When it came to groceries, my mom got the groceries, brought all the groceries in the house, like everything. If there was a light bulb that needed to be yeah. changed, my mom changed the light bulb. Yeah. If there was something that needed to be nailed or figured out, my mm -hmm. mom did it. Mm -hmm. So growing up in that environment, yeah. I just thought that was the norm. Mm -hmm. Then when my mom met my stepdad and we they ended up getting married and moving in together, I always remember that story. I tell people is when my mom drove up with groceries and my stepdad was like oh don't worry about the boys will come out and get the groceries and i'm like why i gotta go out and get the groceries my mom <laughs> could carry the groceries herself she and in the car with you? the groceries probably like 13 or 14 okay okay i'm like she in the car with the groceries and you <laughs> you don't want her to grab one bag like as she coming in like what right and i had to learn and that was through observation of me unlearning yeah. that to understand like all right, this is how a man operates in a relationship with his wife. Mm -hmm. um, I also remember a time to where I, my mom was ironing my stepdad clothes, and I brought it up to my mom to iron mine. He was like, that's my wife. Ooh. Nah, okay. Like, you better iron your own clothes. You your stepdaddy. Like, that, you better iron your own clothes, yeah. and it wasn't a You better wait till you way, get a wife, and she can was, iron your clothes. Yeah, it was not more mine. like, like no yeah, yeah. like your wife your mom is your servant you know mm -hmm. you, you know and it was just me learning a lot of that and one of the biggest impacts for me also is when my stepdad lost his job for a few years but i saw him still lead in a relationship mm -hmm. even though losing his job which let me know that it wasn't necessarily anything that was attached to income that's huge you know what i'm saying no that's huge so I think all those things was more of my observation. Mm -hmm. And there were certain things like my stepdad, open the door for your mom, do this, be, you know, certain yeah. things that's verbally taught. But I think a lot of times you just watch verbal lessons. If they're not followed up with actions, get lost anyways. Right. So a yeah. lot of times we're always looking at what we're observing and taking that in mm -hmm. and soaking that in and using that to kind of shape and form our thoughts yeah. on things. Wow. That was so good. That was like perfect. <laughs> I mean, really, because in some ways that the answer is both. Yeah. In some ways it is. I watched and I learned from watching. Mm -hmm. And there were some also verbal cues as to what I should do. But I do then think some of it was probably just like life. Like you just grew up and decided on the type of man that you wanted to be. And you had great um, examples on how to do that. For sure. I love it that you pointed out that, you know, your stepdad lost his job for a period of time, but did not seemingly lose his ability to be a leader in his marriage and in, your, in the household where today I feel like leadership always becomes about that. About and it's money. like the man, if he's going to be the leader, that means he's the provider, yes. right? Like he's the breadwinner. And I'm not saying those things aren't, you know, that the lines don't blur and Sometimes that is the case, but you can be a leader and not necessarily the breadwinner, but you have to know how to do that. You know what I realize a lot mm -hmm. and what I think falls like it, it kind of annoys me to a sense. OK, is that so many times we talk about leaders mm -hmm. in a relationship, leaders, 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 but never really talk about the job of the person supporting the leader. Oh, yeah. The neck. The, yes. The neck. <laughs> yeah. It's like. Leaders mi make missteps. They make mistakes. There are times where they fall and have to get back up. Yeah. 
you're going to punish me because I lost my job. Mm -hmm. So I'm in leading the moment I fall or have a misstep in leadership. You're going to desert me. Right. That's not being a great support. Nope. No. So it's like you have this high standard sometimes for leaders and leaders in relationships, leaders in businesses, mm-hmm. leaders in organizations. But the moment the leader makes one little mistake, then you want to dog the leader. Right. When it's like, well, that's when you as a support to yeah, the leader are supposed sure. to come in and support this person as they're yeah. trying to find their way and navigate their way through things. Period. Period. That's it. <laughs> One thousand percent. I mean, because and I love that she used the analogy, the head and the neck, Yeah. because you th- there is not one without the other. Right. right. It doesn't function as well or as properly if the neck is disabled and unable to function with the head. It, there has to be an ebb and a flow and there sure. has to be an understanding on like what the actual responsibilities are. And we talked about this in a previous episode about like how that can ebb and flow like. Sometimes you're taking the lead, but other times your wife is taking the lead and you have to know when that is and how to do that. And so no one gets caught up in their feelings around like, well, I'm the man. Well, I'm the woman and I don't want to do that. You know what I mean? Like it's sometimes you need to also challenge your partner. Yeah. Like, and I think that is some of um, the advice that I would want to give to anonymous. It's like, yes, you can express that you want him to take the lead. Um, And that you really find it attractive when he does that. But how do you really encourage someone to do that? And and so that they believe that they can lead. Everyone is not, in fact, designed to be a strong leader. I think all of us have the ability to lead some in a very small capacity, some in a very large capacity. But a big part of um, being comfortable with leading is believing that you can do that. And that comes with encouragement. I mean, even when I think about take it outside of the romantic space, I grew up very similar to you where I had somewhat of a relationship with my father, but I lived in a household with a single mother who did everything, who worked very hard, who fixed her own broken sink, who did hair to make extra money, who pulled extra hours. I mean, she did whatever she had to do to make sure we had a good life. Yeah. Because of that, my mother showed me through example of how to be a woman who can lead, but also taught me that you can do anything if you really put your mind to it. You are capable. And so I never, while I do sometimes still struggle with like fear of jumping out there and doing something, I've never really feared leading something because I learned that so young. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think about my career and how I was able to become getting leadership roles pretty early in my career because I never always believed that I could do it. You just got to figure out how to get there and put the pieces together. But I believe that I could do it. And perhaps her partner, she mentions he grew up in a household where the mothers, the grandmothers took care of everyone. He's the baby. He's the youngest child. And he's the only boy. So Mm -hmm. imagine like you grew up in a household with your mom, your grandma, three sisters. And you were the baby. He's spoiled rotten. You Mm -hmm. know what I mean? He really grew up in a spoiled rotten situation. And you may have also contributed to that to some degree. If That's a struggle in this relationship. And they've been together for two and a half years. So you have to figure out. And I think we're going to give her some tips on how to do that. But encouraging this person to believe in themselves that like, hey, even if you do take the lead and you fall a little short, I got you. You know what I'm saying? I'm supporting you. I'm holding you up but you can do this. I know that you can do this. I'm rooting for you. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's, it's also making sure that he knows that. Yeah, for sure. Um, that was great as well. (laughs) Um, I want to dive into one part of the message that, Mm -hmm. and this was just my first thought. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, which part was it? It was, it was a part to where she basically was like, I just don't want to have to force him to do it. Right. Yeah. And I just want to just put out a warning like I like to do sometimes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we fall into. I feel like women do this more than men Mm -hmm. is that we have this fantasy of somebody just knowing how to do stuff Mm -hmm. without us ever expressing it and wanting that to just be the reality. Right. And being disappointed when somebody just doesn't do something Mm -hmm. inherently or, you know, just on their own without us having to express it. Yeah. 
wow, that is amazing. Like if you can find somebody who can do the things that you want to do without you having to tell them, it does feel great. Like, and it does feel amazing. Of but course. the reality is, is that a lot of times you're going to have to express mm-hmm. and communicate something to yeah. somebody in order for them to get it or in order for them to understand where you're right. coming from. Yeah. So I understand that you would like him to just inherently just know things and mm-hmm. just do things mm-hmm. just out of, you know, just him knowing yeah. that that's how it should be done but that's not the reality no. of, of especially not men we 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 are not good mind readers we are not good at hints a lot of times we nope. are bad at it we are bad <laughs> no tell me directly <laughs> like <laughs> tell me exactly what you want mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. express it please and express don't it. get mad at me when i do it because now i did it because you told me to do it i i need that you that it's the don't get mad that I did it now that you told me to do it because that's what you wanted right exactly and I know you wish that I would have just knew to do do it it. but you remember you told me (laughs) so you told me I did it and I think like another tip for her around like encouraging and supporting him you talked about this on I wish I remember the episode but it was about like trauma Mm -hmm. and supporting your partner through that and you talked about celebrating the, the, the wins, wins, no yeah. matter how small they are. So it's like while he is in this process of really trying to get it and really trying to do it to at to a point that you really enjoy it and you feel really comfortable until he's all the way there and running on autopilot, like make every time or as often as possible a moment of celebration, even if it's something as simple as like a written thank you card to him because mm-hmm. he went and something silly like got the car washed or knew that you were you know gonna have to take the kids out she said they have a family um and so he got ahead of something or got the got the oil change like take him to dinner or buy him lunch just say like baby thank you so much for making sure me and the kids were good this weekend which you did went so far for it like you really looked out for us this weekend and and i appreciate you for doing that not to this is probably a bad metaphor but I think about as a dog, as a dog owner, yes, um, that that's a big part of training pets that you treat. You give them rewards when they do the right <laughs> yeah. thing. And it works, it though. Tra- and it, it gets to a point where you don't even have to give them a treat anymore. I'm not saying you should stop thinking and celebrating your man when he does it. But it start it becomes a part of their routine. Same. That is a very great example. <laughs> OK, I mean, I, I mean, I think about that all the time. This is just in general. This mm-hmm. is talking about people mm-hmm. that people don't think we could be trained. Like we are smart. Mm-hmm. We are very smart. Yeah. We're the smartest mammal being on this earth for the mm-hmm. most part. Um, however, we are not above being mentally f with basically and being trained. Yeah. Sometimes it happens in somewhat of a positive way, but mm-hmm. sometimes it happens in a negative way. Yeah. I mean, you see cultural conditioning, all that stuff. Like these things weren't things that happened by accident. No, people did it on purpose. Mm-hmm. I know you've seen some of those videos, even we talk about the black community, how some scientists or like these yeah. white people sometimes will talk about how to train, how to mm-hmm. do whatever to the Negro or yeah, how to yep, do yep. whatever to the color. It's like it's it's a sense of like it's true doing certain things yeah. to manipulate and train the mind to think and believe certain things. Yeah. And it works. So it does. I think in a relationship, you can do the same thing mm-hmm. to. And of course, not in such. Not in, in such. In, a, yes. Like, uh, uh, you know, like, sometimes we got to make it crazy plain. Yeah. Give it a treat and like, yes. you know, do and this. Like, be like the white Sit. people and like, control the Negroes. Yeah, like, no, you know, no, 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 no. Not, not like that at all. But more of like, like my it's wife. Motivation is not the person she was when we first met. Mm -hmm. And a lot of what she does is geared towards things that I like Mm -hmm. and how I act and, you know, how I operate on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And a part of me continuing my relationship with my wife and marrying my wife was her making those adjustments Mm -hmm. to be more catered towards me. Mm -hmm. And I had to do the same Mm -hmm. in a certain extent. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't necessarily say I trained my wife or she wouldn't say she necessarily trained me, but there may be things that, before I didn't load a dishwasher like that or do this like that or do things like that. But now when I get home, I do this like this and I do mm-hmm. this like that. You keep them countertops keep clean. Counter- you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. There's certain <laughs> things that you do. I fold up the blankets this way or I do mm-hmm. this that way. Yeah. I wouldn't say necessarily it's like treat, train, but it's like it's training to a certain extent of learning. This yeah. is what it takes to be with this person. Yeah. And it just and becomes second nature sometimes. Mm-hmm. So I think that's a great example from a plain yes, perspective. Absolutely. And rewards in a relationship, I think are things that are really common in the beginning yeah. in that honeymoon phase. Like I think you get, 
I think that's almost expected. Like when you're first dating someone where you all do all of these little sweet things for each other because the euphoria is so high and you just like really like this person and you're chasing this. I want to make them happy. I want to make them smile. I want to get them excited about seeing me or going on a date with me. And I think sometimes in relationships that gets lost. Once you get really comfortable with this person, now you guys live together or you have kids, you forget that that is the same person. They may have changed or evolved in some ways, but who doesn't want to feel celebrated or appreciated for doing something right? For you sure. know, for like a reward in a relationship, sometimes just as simple as like seeing you smile, like seeing you be happy. Mm-hmm. Like it, you didn't even, that that is more than enough reward. I'd rather see you like that than like, why do you take the trash out? Like, Damn. why do I have to keep asking you to put oil in the car? Like, why do I, I would rather see a smile on your face. And I think that's motivation for a man that really wants to be with you, for a man that sees his future with you, like his forever with you. I think he would want to make you happy. And yeah. if that's making you happy and it's it's bringing out a certain thing in you and we we didn't say it, but let's be clear. I don't think any man is not motivated by sex, even within his own relationship, even though this is the, the, the box he gets all the time. Maybe there's a way to dial that up a notch when and make that a reward as well not like a you're dangling it over his head or using it mm. but making it really special it's a a way of appreciation yes like maybe you doing something a little extra this time maybe you went and shopped and got something that was his favorite color or you remembered that he said or he saw something that he really liked and you got that for him it's so many different ways to i think motivate let's use the word motivate instead of manipulate (laughs) motivate a man to do or show up how you want him to show up and vice yeah. versa. Same men can motivate women to show up the way that you want them to show up in For a relationship. Sure. So I think she's in a, um, sounds like a very loving relationship, right? But this is just a little bit of a sticking point, but I do want to kind of switch into talking about the alpha female mm-hmm. and how challenging it can be to date a strong headed woman, um, who says she wants a leader, but may not always appear yeah. You like to be in a relationship with a man who leads. I shouldn't say a leader uh, with a man who leads. Yeah, I think so. One of the the struggles with this, because mm-hmm. I feel like I date an alpha woman as well and mm-hmm. Brie. Yeah, um, you do. I agree. But I feel like one of the biggest things is us having, you two having an understanding on, on things to a certain extent. Mm-hmm. And that sounds simple, but I'll give an example. It's like if you if you want something completed by a certain time, Mm -hmm. let's say I have 30 days to return this Amazon package for you. You are doing a lot of stuff. You ask, I'll be like, I could take care of it. Right. I got it. I may wait till day 28. You want to return day 14. So (laughs) yours in those situations, you would think I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing or I'm not taking the lead, but mentally we are in two different in two different wavelengths or two different ideas of what it's going to take to get the job done. Yeah. So just because I don't do it your way doesn't necessarily always mean that I'm not leading or taking the initiative like you want me to. Right. It just could more mean that I have a thought in my head on how I would get it done. Correct. And you have a thought on your head on how you would get it done, mm-hmm. but don't punish me because I don't do it the way that you want it. Yeah. If I tell you I'm going to handle it, I'm going to handle it and mm-hmm. I'm going to handle it in a way that I see fit. Mm-hmm. So it's like I feel like first with alpha women, alpha and men, it's like having an understanding of like, all right, what are we going to do? Or just saying if somebody's going to handle it, letting them handle it mm-hmm. and figure it out. And yep. if it's a parent that is not handled or whatever, then you address it. But mm-hmm. if they say they got it, then yeah. allow them to allow them to get it. Allow them to get it. Yeah. But the biggest thing is I think that women have to understand that men have a need to want to feel needed mm-hmm. um, and not necessarily just in general, but I, if I'm with you, I should feel like you need me. Need me mm-hmm. Right. Um, and if you're an alpha woman, sometimes it can come across if you use certain language as if you don't need me. Yeah. And it's like, I understand to live and everything. You don't need me. Right. Right. I, that's, that's obvious. Like, you're Duh. strong, you're independent. Like I yes. got you. You don't need me to live. You got your own and whatnot. But if you keep expressing that and making a mm-hmm. point of it, that's going to turn a dude off. Yeah. And then a lot of times, think about even yourself. Mm-hmm. If you keep expressing that, what's somebody going to do? 
Oh, you got it then? Yeah. You got a big dog? Like, you good. Can I just stop, like, not stop, but can I just make a uh, a public service announcement to the men out there? Please do not call the women that you are dating in relationship with who are bosses or leaders or anything like that. Please don't refer to them as big dog, champ, um, you know, anything that just, it just... I just, I hate it. I hate it so much. I know it's like cheeky and funny, but yeah. I like as a woman who, like I said, is like this, it drives me insane. Don't call me big dog. I'm not big dog. Yeah. I'm not. I'm I'm Rhonda, <laughs> baby, sweetie, something. Big dog is like, it's almost like a, like a, I feel like it's not a, um, an insult, but it lands well, that way. Yes. Like, like you got it, big dog. Like you don't need me, and I don't. I don't ever want to feel that way when I'm with a guy. Like it's a joke, but I hate it. Yeah, I hate it. I hate it so much. But um, that is such a good point about like not about women trying to or alpha women trying to control how you get to the result and not just letting you get there. Yeah. Um, that's something that I definitely have had to work on. And because I've had to manage like multiple people, teams of people with different personalities. And so I've had to learn other people's jobs and roles in order to best understand how to get the results. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, years ago, long, long, long ago, I had to realize like, oh, I can't do that. You know, I can't do that at home. You know, like I get paid to do that at work. And I can, like you say, you and Bree, you get on the same page about what we need to get done. But your process is your process. And so by working on that myself, that's even something that I have let go of to some degree professionally. Mm -hmm. Like if I hire somebody onto a team and this is your job and this is your job description, how you get to Z is is really up to you. As long as you are ethical, moral, you don't break any laws, Mm -hmm. you you don't put the company in any danger. You got to Z. That's all I care about. Care about the results. I could have done it when I was a leasing professional, when I was an administrative assistant. I could have done it a hundred different ways. This is your way. And someone gave me space to do it my way. And so same thing in relationships. Like I cannot say it enough. I've reposted the memes. I have shared it a thousand times. Shout out to Crystal Franklin, um, who I love. Dope producer in LA. I love Crystal. Yes. So she put up like, Please be clear that women who are directors, leaders, senior managers, vice presidents, presidents, CEOs, we want to take that hat off so fast when we come in the house with you. Like, boy, I barely want to move my feet along this floor. (laughs) It would be nice if you could just meet me at the door and carry me onto the bed. Mm -hmm. Like, yes, like I do not want to run my household constantly. I don't want you to always have to um, like check in with me about every little thing I, like i said it irritates me at work when i'm like i gave this person a task just get it done if you have to sit with me the whole time to do it then why are you why are you here yeah i look forward to making sure making it clear to my future husband that i do need you and i'm not afraid to say that like no of course to survive of course we know that but I would never use that language. Like, no, I do need you. Like, I need you to be here. I need you to love on me. I need you to support me. I need you to encourage me. I need you to fall asleep. Whatever you need me to say mm-hmm. to make sure you are very clear that your space in my life or your position in my life is significant. Yeah. It's significant. Like I say to my mother, I don't know how I'm going to do life without you. I will do it without her one day. Mm-hmm. You know, hate to think like that, but I will. But I want my husband to feel like I don't I don't know what I'm gonna do without you. Like, mm-hmm. I need you that much. So I do think that's a struggle for alpha women because we we are the needed ones in our professional spaces where I don't want to feel like that when I come home. I have a question for you. Yeah. Do you think that each gender has its own like just instinctual things that come with that gender that you feel like could be applied to not I don't want to say all because mm-hmm. I don't want to do absolutes. Yeah. But do you think each gender has its general like instinctual things and behaviors that can contribute to how they think and how they act? Yes, for sure. Okay. I mean, I think the not to sound like a generalist or stereotypical, but I think the ones that we all 
talk about constantly, like men just being strong and anything that falls under that category, whether that's getting the groceries or opening up the door or, oh my gosh, it's a bug. Like last night, there was a a bug crawling on my ceiling. Mm. First thing that pops in my mind is, damn, I I wish I had a boyfriend. (laughs) 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 Because I do not want to kill it. I do not. But I'm going to have to because there's nobody else in here. I'm going to have to kill the bug. But like silly stuff like that, but just like more of the heavy lifting physically and theoretically. And then I do think women, at least the women that I know, are just more naturally nurturers, caretaking, even if it's not for children, for you, like making sure you feel good. Like, what do you need? What can I help you with? Like, is it food? Is it a hug? Is it a head rub? Is it ironing your clothes? Is it, it's just these things where you just, I think those two kind of categories are very natural. Now there are women who knock on eye your clothes. There are men They're who are just true. as scared as bugs, scared of bugs as you are. Mm. So y- neither one of you can kill the bug. Yeah. But yes, I do think those things are very natural. And I think when, if that is the type of relationship you want, let me preference it with that. I think when you two are right for each other, those instinctual things, they just like, it's almost like they pour out of you. Like they fall out of your body, out of your skin. Like I see how you are with Brie. Just naturally strong, naturally want to make sure she good. Like we we, we uh, had a gig recently and we had some downtime on set and Brie was coming to, to hang out with her mom and her brother. And it's like, I got to go make sure my wife is good. Like I'm going to walk down because she can't figure out how to get in instead of just constantly being on the phone with her like, babe, figure it out. Like you can figure it out. You like, nah, I have to go get my wife. Mm. And then she comes and she's checking on you. First thing she does when she sees you picking at you, wiping your hair, get the hair off your thing. You look good. You look, you look so nice. Like you two just bubble up in what is natural to you. Mm. You being, I got to take care of my wife and doing this heavy lift and her being like, I got to take care of him. Make sure he looks good. Make sure he feels good. You need anything to eat, babe? That. Yeah, I think when you're with the right person and in the right situation, it's like you can't even fight that feeling. It's like it like I said, it's like it jumps out you. I want to take care of her. I want to take care of him. And that cycle just continues and continues and continues for a happy, successful relationship. So I I think you hit that like nail on the head, like because as somebody who's in a relationship, I don't like them. First, I don't like to make absolutes because yeah, you, you get in not. trouble when you do that. Mm-hmm. But as I start to see how Brie and I operate, and then, you know, I'm a very observant person, observing other relationships, observing even people that I work with, both men and women. I do believe that there are just like things just as gender, as a gender that you innately just have. Mm-hmm. Even when I think of like men, I'm like, we are physically just built bigger yeah. than women. Yeah. Like physically. Yep. Yeah. And that advantage was given to us for a specific reason. Sure. Um, whether even that was if it was before the modern and industrial age, whether that was hunting, building, mm-hmm. different stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, women don't have a physical advantage, but you have to like there's no way that we were just created bigger physically and then just better internally as well. It's like, right. no, women have you, women are amazing. Mm-hmm. Like women <laughs> are 10 times better than men. (laughs) I have to say that. You heard it here first, guys. I have to say that. Real love scenario exclusive. I'm saying like, (laughs) I mean, and I I say that, take that with a grain of salt because a lot of Of women feel like they don't need men. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I hate when I hear women say that, like, oh, I don't need no man. And Mm -hmm. we know physically, whatever, but it's almost like a connotation like, like men would not uh, the right man couldn't bring value to you you or elevate whatever you're doing and i don't think that's the case but being in my relationship with brie what i realized is that number one she is more nurturing right Mm -hmm. than me than i ever could be Mm -hmm. i don't even possess that skill or that ability to be that nurturing and that caring and stuff like that like Mm -hmm. i don't Mm -hmm. have it i can try to force it even when i try to force it it doesn't come off as whether that's a random baby who's sitting in the thing Mm -hmm. whether that's like just the interaction i can't right do that or Mm -hmm. even come across genuine enough to make that seem real or not creepy Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. The stuff that she could do to a random baby who's sitting in a crib, if I try to do that, the baby per- would cry. person would be like, excuse me, <laughs> sir, what are you doing? Get your creepy ass away <laughs> from my, my baby. baby. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's because she possesses that mm-hmm. natural mm-hmm. ability to nurture. Yeah. And for me, the only only thing that I, um, I, I feel like possess that's 
not better, but different or more an advantage is number one, I think more long term than short term. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's like whenever she's thinking about something, I'm thinking of more the big picture. I can care less about the small. Yeah. I'm thinking five years, 10 years down the road Mm -hmm. or in the security part. Like I'm like, yo, when you leave the house, lock the door. Ain't nobody. We in Tyson's ain't no. Mm-hmm. I don't need it to happen one time because sure. people I've worked in apartments, mm-hmm. you press a door, you accidentally go in one. Like I've done this before. Mm-hmm. I don't care. Like lock the door every time you go through. I'm Absolutely. thinking of th- like everything because yeah. yeah. my I'm physically as a man always thinking about protection. That's right. That's even like you said with the bug. I, Rhonda, if a bug came in here like a bee or something and it could start flying around my head, I'd be like of course. Out out the door, maybe. Like, mm-hmm. but if Bree's in here, no, it's a different story. Yeah. Like, I got to get this be away from I my wife. This, like, yeah. I got to get this out. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> if mm-hmm. there's an issue with bugging the house, like, and it's, I got to protect my wife at all it costs. Out. And yeah. it's a completely different way of operating. Mm-hmm. So, like you said, you bring that out of each other, but that's just a natural instinct of myself as a man versus a woman. So, I just was, as we talk about like alpha females and stuff mm-hmm. like that, I feel like sometimes women fight against not that their nat- nature but yeah. their natural mm-hmm. like trying to prove a point sure sometimes mm-hmm. and it's like who are you trying to prove this point to it yeah. seems like it's more for you than it is yes and sometimes it is me. because it's rooted in just bad experiences for and sure. you let that hard in you you know if you have enough of them you you really do get into that place of like i don't need a man or because every man that is this has come in your life has disappointed you mm-hmm. or let you down or not shown up in his highest self and his highest form of 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 masculinity or being a man and so you feel like eh, to avoid that i'm just gonna be as stoic and as strong as possible yeah. and not ever let him see this softer side of me or this quote-unquote weaker side of me i i hate it that that even gets to gets to be correlated that like being soft is like being weak and it's and it's not it's yeah. i actually you know, so much going on, going out right now about like soft life, soft life, like women want a soft life and nothing makes me like happier when I actually can feel that I'm experiencing that, whether it's because I'm creating it for myself, like I'm taking myself somewhere or I'm just undoing or taking off the layers of, or the armor of like life. Like when I can just that's why I said for my birthday, like just having a very easy day where I didn't have to be responsible for anything or anybody. It was like, child, this right here feels like I'm laying <laughs> yeah. on cotton balls all day. Like yeah. this is what I want. So to have that within a relationship, quick story, and I won't say um, my friend's name, but she's very much an alpha female from a career perspective. Mm-hmm. And she um, was dating a guy and, you know, he asked her to do something that she doesn't do very well which was cook yeah he wanted to pre- wanted to prepare her to prepare a meal for an event where they would be hosting their friends and mm. i think if it was not for how this man shows up for her and how he like handles her quote unquote or he's very masculine he makes her feel very comfortable and soft i think she would have been like oh well i don't cook so we're gonna have to call somebody pay for something blah 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 and I say this baby launched into full on Martha Stewart <laughs> called me like, I need you to help me. We need to come up with a menu. You cook really well. but We're just going to say that I helped or basically I did it. If you're I'm OK with you taking credit for my work, whatever is going to make that man <laughs> feel like you did that. I'm with it. Yeah. We're in the grocery store the day of the event. There's just like she puts together this beautiful table with flowers and I mean, just went all out. And I'm just really looking at my friend like, who is this? Who in the hell <laughs> is this? You about to turn into a flower right before my eyes, girl. <laughs> I am I'm proud of you, friend. But it took him to tap into that and to put her in a space where she almost felt safe to be that soft and safe to be that light on her feet. It was a beautiful thing to to see. And that's so, what leadership is. That's what it, it is. It's it's. It's it's not a position given, it's position earned. Mm-hmm. And that's through being consistent, mm-hmm. um, building trust. Like yeah. that's that's what it's all based off of. Yeah. Like some men think because I'm a man, I am a leader. Yes. And the leader in this relationship. It's like, no, no. You have to earn that. For sure. Because leadership is like I said, it's trust. Mm-hmm. And you have to show me that you're consistently showing up every day, every yeah. day, consistent to where I can trust you 
to with decisions mm -hmm. and trust you to lead for sure. Um, but I want to get into one part that she had talked about because I think it's a big thing that we could discuss mm -hmm. and a big part of this is yeah. she talks about his upbringing mm -hmm. with women, but kind of glossed over. She talked about her upbringing in a traditional household. Yeah. And while I feel like I grew up in more of a traditional man leading thing, mm -hmm. I feel like that was a healthy version of it. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of unhealthy versions sure. of traditional relationships. Mm -hmm. um, I know I have family. I was about to say their names, but I'm not going to say it. Okay. But to where it's like, yo, know, they it's almost like the woman would tell you, no, you don't need to be doing this or you need to do this for him and you need to do that mm -hmm. for him and you need to do this for your husband and yeah. he shouldn't be doing this. Yep. And you should, be, and it's like, oh, oh wow. Wow. Like, yeah. <laughs> this is, this is not a relationship. Slave? This is slavery. <laughs> like, I don't understand. Oh, we were done with that. <laughs> or, or even sometimes we've all seen it with men who they get told by other men, this is what a man is. This is mm -hmm. what you need to do to be a man. She don't this do is, that? What? She, you know, like, she don't what? Like, mm -hmm. and what yeah. you realize as you get older, those things have nothing to do with leadership, being a man, yeah. um, being a support to a man or anything. But I just want to talk about traditional relationships and how, like, mm -hmm. Although he may have a version of how things should go that's not healthy, mm -hmm. I want to make sure that your version of what you feel like he should be doing is, is healthy. Is healthy as yeah, well. Yeah, for sure. You no, know what I mean? Absolutely. <laughs> because there are there are plenty of people that I know that grew up with two parents in their household and they have said that they wish that it wasn't like that. Like mm. I would have rather my dad not be here because of how tumultuous the relationship was. Yeah. Either abusive. Um, or he was there, but he wasn't there. Like he was physically in the household, but he was not really checked into the household, wasn't checked into the family. So, you know, I don't know. Obviously, we don't have the detail around what her design was. For sure. But I mean, there are so many healthy representations. And I think the biggest one, which we keep going back to, which tells me that this is spot on, is that there is a ebb and flow in managing a household. For sure. If all you ever saw was you, your dad or the man in your household being um, in charge and making all the decisions and almost ruling with an iron fist, and you only saw your mother being very docile and meek and, and mild-mannered and just never, ever contributing um, outside of domestic things, not saying that those things don't matter because they do. They are an important part of managing a household. But if there was never any give and take, that it never looked or it looked like your mom was maybe sad or unhappy and your father was detached or removed, if you saw things like one slept in one room and they're like, that was my grandparents at a point. Like at some point they stopped sleeping in the same bedroom and they stayed married until they passed away but it was clear to me that the marriage was over if and I shouldn't say that because everybody's thing is different but what pushed you to go from sleeping in the same bedroom to now I sleep in one you sleep in one this is how we go to bed yeah. every single night I wouldn't want my kids in that situation you know I want my kids to see a happy loving relationship majority of the time I want my kids to see that I contribute to the household and I want my kids to see you contributing to the household and whatever that looks like I don't mean money I mean, contributing to the household that could be cooking together, cleaning together, you washing, I'm cooking, you know, all of those different things. But yes, the design should look happy. You don't remember happy times. You just remember dad did all the work. Mom did some of the work or practically none of the work. I don't know that that's enough to just be like, that's exactly what I want. And that takes me to a, a point of you made me just think of uh, I, I guess a general rule of thumb that I probably will now go by okay. is that real leaders don't lead off of rules. They leave off, lead off of goals. Mm -hmm. So it's like every day we need to eat. That's the goal. Yeah. How that gets done. It could be a lot of different ways. Yeah. And between us, mm -hmm. we're going to figure out what us eating every day looks like. Yeah. I'm not focusing on the rule of you having to cook or me having to cook or mm -hmm. no, I'm focused on the goal. We got to eat every day. Yeah. That's how we're going to do it. Let's figure it out. Let's figure it out. We want to buy a house at some point. Let's mm -hmm. figure this out. Right. I need to get to work every day. Mm -hmm. You need to get to work every day. Mm -hmm. What car? Like we, we're going to figure out. We, we focus on the goal. I don't care about how you, who does this or who does that. It's like, I have a goal. We, 
whatever we're trying to reach or we have a goal we're trying to reach. Let's work together to figure out how we're going to reach how this goal. Yeah. And like you said, then that comes with the ebb and flows. But we have an understanding that it's not about who does what, when, or who does plate, that or anything plate. like that. It's about us achieving the goal that we're setting out to achieve. That's it. It's all that matters. <laughs> Drop the stuff, <laughs> mic drop. Drop the mic. Everything outside of that drop the mic. shouldn't. Doesn't matter. Doesn't. That's because that is partnership. Exactly. Because that is partnership. And that's what, to me, a relationship is. It is a partnership. I could never function in a space where, like, there are these rigid rules around only I do this and only you do that. What? No, dog. Like, I'm not doing that. Like, how can we function that way? And that's what real leaders do. Like, if you're in a position, you've been in positions of leadership, Mm -hmm. it as a leader, you defer a lot. Mm -hmm. Like you understand, I, I number one, I feel like things run better when you have one person in charge and to a certain extent, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. One person that's in charge of just, that's why companies have CEOs, Mm -hmm. they have presidents, they have VPs of certain departments Mm -hmm. because having one head to kind of just facilitate everything Mm -hmm. just makes it easier. Yeah. Um, But if you're a good and great leader, you understand I'm not good at this. So this person, this your thing, this your thing, mm-hmm. um, just checking with me. I'll offer my opinion and give my thoughts, but ultimately, you know more than me. Yeah. So and it's like I feel like that's a sign of great leadership. Yeah. And I do that a lot with Bree. There's a lot of things she's way better at me at. Yeah. Um, Bree also is way better executing things. Mm-hmm. I can come up with a plan and thing that I feel like, all right, we should do this. We should do that. But when it comes to executing, executing that plan. Yeah. Hands down. Hands down. Wait, she could do something that could take me four days in an hour. Like Mm. literally, like Mm. she's that great at executing. Sometimes she gets lost in the big picture. Mm -hmm. Um, Even when it's coming like, oh, I want to buy this. This on sale. That on sale. I'm like, yo, we got other things we trying to do. Like you can't pull it. But it's like if it comes to doing something, she can knock it out Mm -hmm. way faster than I can. And that's the great partnership in the yin and yang of things of having somebody who can help balance you out and support you through everything. Mm -hmm. And it's like as the leader in my household, I support her in a lot of things. You know what I'm saying? It's not it's not this. I said it's the goal. It's the goal. I don't have that big of an ego to just be like, I'm not good at this thing. But because, I must do but it. But I must do it. Yeah. And I used to talk about this with, with Bree, what, what balance is or fair. Like mm-hmm. the word fair goes up a lot of times. What's fair in a relationship? Mm-hmm. And I was like, fair isn't 50 50. Like, that's not fair. If we, if there's task along what we have to do mm-hmm. and you're better at 70 percent of those things and I'm better at 30 percent, what's fair is that. At this point, you do 70, I do 30. Yeah. Because you're better at the 70. I'm better at the 30. And over a relationship, that's going to change. It's going to go up and down. It's going to switch. Like, it's no, it's not helping us reach our goal. If I'm doing something I'm not good at just because we want to split it and make it seem like it's fair. Yeah. You're way better at this than I am. Mm -hmm. Why am I doing this? Yeah. Like, I'm sitting there wasting time. I could be doing something that I'm better at versus... Mm -hmm trying to make things fair 50 50 and it's like it doesn't make sense so like i said going back leadership real leaders focus on the goal how are we gonna work on accomplishing this goal together not like who's what rule do we have to whose responsibility is this and that and like that's it that is nah. it. That's so good. <laughs> so good. I have nothing further to add to that. <laughs> nothing at all. You're like, you've been doing that. I feel like the last few episodes, like the, you just button it up perfectly. Button it up. <laughs> shout, out, shout out to my co-host. <laughs> button it up perfectly. That was it. That was it. No, I love that. This was a, this was a good yeah, uh, no, conversation. It um, was. And I, and I think, I think they have a relationship that is obviously it will survive it. I totally think it will. Um, as she mentioned, it is, tied to his upbringing it's been many years it's something that he's been very much used to just like you're very used to what you're used to you know so you just guys you guys have to work together and understand that that compromise is necessary but i think if you continue to motivate him to be the leader that you want him to be to be he's you said he's compassionate and he's kind and he's honest and he has all of the baseline things to be that it yeah. would be different if he was like you couldn't say any of those things about him i would might tell you like this you might have a hard time yeah. time getting him to, to turn the, the page but i think he'll be fine totally you just got to tap into it encourage him celebrate it when he does it yeah 
um, and it'll happen. I have three things that I want to say before mm-hmm. we close out. And it's and I also just want to answer a question with that as mm-hmm. well. Mm-hmm. So, number one, um, when she it, in the whole leadership thing, I think a lot of times a lot of people don't know what leadership is or what leadership looks like. Yeah. A lot of men don't. And a lot of women don't either. Right. Um, So I think it's important to define like what you actually want. Mm -hmm. Like just saying like, I want you to just step up more and like, no, give him specific examples of things that he can do that will make you feel like, all right, you're taking the lead and stuff like that. So I think that's important. Number two, where she says, I don't want to have to force him to do it. Mm -hmm. This is something we talked about in a episode before. It's what effective communication is. And that's them receiving what you're saying. Like, if you you have to learn your partner, you have to learn how to speak their language. You have mm-hmm. to learn how to communicate something to them in a way that they receive it. Yeah. Um, so if there is a way to communicate things, I can't give you that specifically because I don't know your person. Right. I don't know how he receives things or mm-hmm. takes things in. But I feel like there's a way that you could communicate this message to him without it feeling like to him that you're forcing him to doing to do something. Sure. Um, but lastly, she says, how can I get him to take the lead in decision making i don't know if we answered that so i just wanted to get your final thought on that question like how can she get him to take the lead in decision making and then i can yeah give a thought on that i mean i I think i did to some degree just saying like encouraging him so that he knows that he can do it got you and that may look like you falling back that may look like you not making the decision Mm -hmm. right giving him space to actually make it not nudging him in, in the direction that you think he should go but letting him make the decision, because like we talked about, sometimes as an alpha female, you are just used to being the decision maker all day at work and in business and someone's coming to you, you got an answer. Perhaps it's just a time for you to be like, you know what, whatever you want, babe. Like, well, what do you think? You know, I'm, I'm OK with whatever it is you decide, you know, using those types of words and those types of phrases to really make sure he knows that you trust him to take the lead on this yeah. and not jumping ahead of his decision making but yeah just encouraging him and supporting him got you yeah i like that 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 feedback and i think with you saying that that it's so great because a lot of men kind of fall in that trap and women fall in that trap as well Mm -hmm. of like you are an alpha female for instance right Mm -hmm. and most of the time alpha females i don't just most females in general are Mm -hmm. or women i should say are Mm -hmm. opinionated to Mm -hmm. a certain Mm -hmm. extent and sometimes the man could feel like he's doing you a favor or the relationship a favor by just saying, like, whatever you want, that's that's yeah. fine. Like, or you can go ahead, whatever you feel like. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. He thinks that's number one, avoiding confrontation. Yeah. And number two, you're always opinionated about stuff. So if you have an opinion about something, I'm gonna just shut I'm up. just like, go ahead. Like, I don't care. Like, do what you want. But then in your head, you're like, dang, I wish you would just I wish like, you just made a decision. Yeah. Yeah, just make a decision. Mm-hmm. But he just feels like, you know, mm-hmm. I should just let you do whatever you want and i think what you said is like not accepting that is good it's like no like i don't i don't want the answer to be whatever you want no Mm -hmm. what do you want what do you want i'll just wait for you know you to decide yeah like i or using the words i trust you i trust you babe whatever you think is best for us i trust that Mm -hmm. i trust that decision you may even have to tap into the matriarchal tree here. I don't know how what her relationship is with mom or grandma yeah. or the sisters. There may be someone there that he listens to because they they help rear him. For sure. You know, and I, they could also, you know, so take that with a grain of salt because sometimes they could be discouraging, discouraging to what you yeah. want. They could be like, girl, you need to do that. You need to take care yeah. of him because he's used to that. That's what we did for him when we've mm-hmm. grown up. But it could also be a sister or mom who can say, baby, I did it because I had to do it. Yeah. But if I could have done it with a man, with your father, with, uh, you know, who would have be his brother in law, if this is one of his sisters, like showing him and, and letting him know that, like, while you see us doing this and taking on all of this, mm-hmm. we don't really want to have to do that. And like you have an opportunity here with your girlfriend to 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 do that for her yeah. like be the man that we wish we would have had for sure so i think she may that may be a resource as well to to tap into the women in his family who he loves and respects um and see if they can be of support to it as well i agree and lastly i'll say just be patient yeah i always tell people that like even if it's not going to happen overnight, gonna happen overnight. Mm-hmm. you talking about he how 40? much 40 years mm-hmm. of unlearning that you're trying to get him to do yeah 
that's not gonna happen overnight Mm-mm. just because you say you want something to happen that's not even his instinctual like thing to do so yeah. it's like it's gonna take time that's why Rhonda says celebrating wins are so important because mm-hmm. there will be times where he does make that effort but you can't chalk it up as that's what you were supposed to be doing so you don't recognize it like yeah. that's what you're supposed to be doing mm-hmm. and you don't see it as that big of a deal yeah. like you need to celebrate that but be patient with that man if he's showing an effort trying to make strides if you're communicating like mm-hmm. be patient it's going to take time yeah it's going to take time yeah you could always just put this episode on one night <laughs> Just be like, babe, let's flash this. I'm on this new show. Skip through the scenario because they might. <laughs> yeah, skip might the scenario ca- that might, might be a little too. <laughs> yeah, every year. All this stuff. Just skip to the parts. Sh- you gonna know, be like forty years. Forty. Damn it! How old we got? We've been together for two and a half, and we got blended family. Did you, did you, did you, did you, you know, skip the scenario part. But yes, you know, there. I feel. I feel really positive about sure. it. I understand how she feels, but I can. I've all. I also can understand where he may be struggling and yeah. why he's struggling. There's sure. valid reason for why he may be struggling in this in this space. For sure. Yeah. Well, cool. Like I feel like it was a good scenario. It thank was. you for writing in. Thank you, um, anonymous. Yeah. Thank you, anonymous. <laughs> uh, make sure that you follow us on Instagram at Isdre Smith, and I'm at Ronnie Cake, and the relationship. Was store page and also if you want to write in your real life scenario just visit the site relationshiprestore.com and hit contact and you can give us your scenario also we need to up the review drop us it. a line so let me say if you made it right now you're listening to me that means you're truly a fan of what we're doing yes and that we gave amazing advice today we did, we did. <laughs> so uh we would love it if you yeah. kind of wrote us a review. It, it means a lot to us. Mm-hmm. Free to you. But a five-star review does help push the show forward. So we love you for we it. thank you. <laughs> Shout out and peace out to my real lovers. Ooh. Ooh. With the wink. Oh. Drake killing y'all with these winks. Bye.